Next routing part one. In this lesson, we are going to cover basic routing, dynamic routing, and validating route params. So let's get started with basic routing. I have already created a user directory, and within that user directory, we have created an index.view and one.view, two pages. So both the user directory is in the pages directory. In the previous lesson, I created the about.view component. Now let's try to get into the user directory. If I type user as the route, then it will load the index.view component. When Nuxt sees folder structure like this, pages, user and index, it will add a route like this to the view router. So the name is user, the path is slash user and the component it links to is pages user index. So if you want to go to the one component, then you have to go localhost 3000 users slash one. And this will uh, load the one component that we have right now. So that will load actually a object like this to the view router. So this is the basics of routing. You can have any number of nested files which will map like this user and then one so if we have uh, let's create another folder called test within user and then let's move this one component into that so if i do that then i should be able to go to user test slash one there you are so now we are inside this file so if i remove this and test page we can see it rebuilding so now this pattern is user um, test one and here the path is user test one the component is user slash test slash one dot view so this is this is the object that will get added to the view router so that's the basic of routing here in the documentation you can see exactly that we have user index dot view one dot view and index dot view which will create a routes file that looks like this now let's get into dynamic routing first uh, let's create a users directory And within that users directory, I'm going to create a file called underscore id.view. Now this is a dynamic route. So let's create h1 user id. And we can access this parameter that gets passed by the URL through route, params, and id. The word ID we get is because this is underscore ID. If it was underscore test, then it would be route params test. So now let's try navigating to this route. We will go, have to go to users and then, okay, that's, we see the fourth four as the param. So user ID route params ID gives user ID four. In the documentation, you will see that this ID is not required. So if we create users directory and then underscore ID, that means this ID is optional, okay? So we can even have a route that does not have this. It still works. It's blank as the params ID is blank, but still we can get this page. If you want to make the ID required, then you should create something like this. You should create the folder to be underscore folder name and then ID. So if you want to make ID required, you should do something like this. You have to create a folder within. We'll do underscore ID. And inside that folder, we can have the file index.view. Now we can delete this. Now, if we go into users, oh, 
we have to create a template so let's do a simple template uh, users with required parameter of course you can get the parameter by doing route params dot id okay now if we refresh this So now we get this error. Right now, actually, we shouldn't have been able to go into this component without a parameter. I think that's because the server has not updated correctly. Let's restart the server. I did see a comment in a previous lesson, which he says that he had to restart the server to identify the page. So this can be the reason for this as well. So let's give it a restart and try to get into this file. It works. All right, it doesn't work as it should. So I went on Duxjs repository and found this. So what this is, it's the same thing. We are unable to create a required parameter, but the way to do it is actually has been the, the documentation is off-putting. The way you should do it actually is, it doesn't go to a 404, but it is reported as a bug and it will be fixed soon. But to do it right now, if you want, this is the required one, required parameter. If you don't want it to go there, you have to actually create an index.view. So in here we can specify if uh, if there is no parameter, this page gets loaded. So if I save this and then if I go to local host users, then this page gets loaded. But if there is a parameter, then of course the page with the underscore ID gets loaded. So that's dynamic routing. Of course, we can have nested dynamic routes as well. For example, in the documentation, you can see here we have a slug and then comments. So if you want a dynamic parameter here and then comments. So we can create that as well. Let's do that. Let's create a folder called underscore slug. File called comments. And let's create a template comments page with the slug parameter. So if you want the slug parameter, you can get it like again the route dot params dot slug. So the name slug comes from underscore slug. All right. So of course we need to have only one root element. So let's move this inside the div and slave. Please note, once I save it automatically uh, formatted this, that's coming from this VS code settings.js. Uh, please copy and paste this set of in, uh, configuration to your VS code settings.js. This will uh, get the whole formatting done when you save. All right, so let's check this out, check, check this route out. So we'll go slug, which can be anything. So we'll do test slug param slash comments. So yeah, we get the comments page and of course we get the parameter. Cool. Finally, I would like to do one more thing, uh, which is the param validator. So in Nuxt, you can validate the parameter by using this validate function. So let's copy and paste this. Now uh, in this rec X, it says that the param must be, a, must be a number, but this page does not get a param ID. It gets a slug. So let's do that. 
Now this should return a 404 because the slug is actually a not an integer. So let's refresh and see. Yeah, page could not be found, but if you go and add the integer as the parameter, then we will get the parameter. So that is validating route parameters. All right, so I think I covered a lot in this one. Uh, in the next lesson, we'll do part two of routes, which is nested routing. All right, thank you very much for watching. Do let me know what you think, if it's good or bad, what, what do I need to improve? Have a good day. Take care. Bye.